For literally decades, Adobe Creative Apps have been the default in the graphic design industry. Apps like Illustrator, InDesign, and Photoshop make up the core programs that many designers use every day in their work. Adobe has done a great job creating apps that are elegant and usable. But something happened in 2013 that made some people upset. Adobe started only offering these apps on a subscription basis. This actually made a lot of sense for a lot of people who would then continue to receive the updated apps on a constant basis. But we are five years into this now and there are still designers who would rather pay for a single app license than for a reoccurring subscription. Adobe has failed to offer them a way through. Now, there is actually way more going on in Adobe's Creative Cloud than just these three apps. There are a ton more apps as well as cloud storage space and syncing options with CC libraries and other expansive benefits. But for the purposes of this video, I just want to focus on those designers who really just need these three apps. A vector editor, a layout editor, and a raster editor. In 2014, the British company Serif heard the complaints and offered their first app under the Affinity brand, Designer. Designer was meant to compete directly with Adobe's flagship vector editor, Illustrator. Designer was immediately an amazing experience. But on its own, it wasn't enough to let many people break free from Adobe's subscription. Even with the release of Affinity Photo the next year, most designers still had to stay with Adobe because Designer just couldn't handle the layout work that many designers use in Design 4. It seemed that the scale was tipped perpetually in Adobe's favor. Until now. In August, Sarah finally released the beta version for Affinity Publisher. The reason this is so monumental is that it means for the first time since Adobe forced the subscription model, there is a viable trio of apps that designers can use in place of Adobe's core creative programs. So now let's look at whether or not ditching Adobe is actually feasible. The first issue is that Publisher is still in beta. So that means you might not want to jump off the Adobe wagon quite yet. While it seems fairly stable so far, it is a beta program and bugs are to be expected. Of course, that also means that it is currently free, so you don't lose anything except time by downloading and testing it out. You can keep paying for InDesign in the meantime so that you don't end up the creek without a paddle if Publisher does crash or can't handle your work. All of the Affinity apps compete well against their Adobe counterparts. There are always a few features that aren't present, but most of these are specific to certain types of projects or workflows and may not affect you. The best thing to do is check and see if each of the programs can do what you need before making the switch. Also, be aware that the Affinity team is constantly working to improve the apps, so many features that were not originally in Designer or Photo at launch have been added over the last few years. We can expect the same thing to occur with Publisher once it is fully launched. That is one of the huge benefits to the Affinity programs. Once you buy them, you continue to get updates without a subscription or in-app purchases, so you get the new features as they come out. Next, let's talk about pricing. First, Adobe will charge you $52.99 a month for the Creative Cloud subscription. Remember that price includes a lot more apps, cloud storage, Adobe's Typekit fonts, and more. If you don't want all the other apps, you can purchase a single app subscription. But at $20.99 a piece, you are quickly better off just with the full subscription. When we look at Affinity's pricing, we see that each app is a one-time purchase of $50. And often you can get them cheaper if you buy during a sale. For example, every time they win an award from Apple for their beautifully designed apps, they will knock 10 or 20% off the price. Also, when they release a new app, they often have a sale on all their apps. We don't know for sure what Publisher will cost when it comes out of beta, but we can guess it will be $50 like the other two. So, when you do the math, you are looking at $150 one time to get the three Affinity apps, or $53 a month to buy into the Adobe Creative Cloud. If all you want out of the Adobe Creative Cloud is Illustrator, InDesign, and Photoshop, then you are going to be saving money after the fourth month of using Affinity products. There are other things to consider, however. Remember, Adobe comes with all those other programs and features, which, if you want to use them, quickly make it the better option, unless you can get those features somewhere else. Next, let's talk about the mobile experience. Currently, this is dominated by Affinity, who have released both Designer and Photo on the iPad. These are full-featured vector editing and raster composition apps. 
They can do nearly everything their desktop counterparts can do. Adobe's mobile apps, on the other hand, have been lackluster for the most part. They only prove useful in conjunction with desktop apps, except for a few of the Photoshop apps that have been well received. Even these are not fully functional versions of Photoshop on an iPad. Affinity allows you to easily move projects between your iPad and desktop apps, but you aren't required to do so. Again, Affinity's mobile apps are a single purchase for $20 a piece. So, in the end, it really is going to depend on what you need. If you only need photo vector and layout applications, I think you can go with Affinity and save a lot of money. If you need other applications for web development or video editing, then you probably want to stick with Adobe. If you need to do work on an iPad on the road, then I would at least look at investing into one or both of Affinity's mobile applications. I think for many people, they're going to find more freedom in being able to say farewell to Adobe's locked-in subscription model. But those who really rely on InDesign may want to wait until Publisher gets its official release before fully switching over. One option would be to purchase Designer and Photo and then do a single subscription to InDesign for the remaining time while you wait for Publisher to be fully released. On one last note, because I know someone will put it in the comments, yes, I am aware of and have used Inkscape, Scribus, and GIMP, which are the open source vector layout and photo editors. These are the options for those who don't want to spend any money at all on their design programs. I have a hard time recommending them though because their user interfaces are so clunky and getting them up and running can be difficult for some people. Please let me know which design programs you use in the comments and whether or not you are thinking about switching them based on these new developments.